Hello and welcome to Sophie & Co. I'm Sophie Shebert. Now today, while sanction threats against Russia send ripples of panic across the world of investment, there are still those who remain unfazed by the political turmoil. How big is the risk of putting your trust in the Russian market? And how long until the anxiety blows over? Well, we ask the man who knows all about following the money. Renowned investor Jim Rogers is our guest today. With the West pushing Russia further away, Moscow securing a historic pivot to Asia. Having signed hundreds of billions of dollars worth of deals, Russia and China are closer than ever before. Should the West be worried? Did it fail in its proclaimed mission of isolating Russia? And are all the sanctioned threats just undermining trust in the dollar? Jim Rogers, renowned investor, businessman and author, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. So we're going to start with the sanctions. The West is busy with them, um, coming up with a new round for Russia. But Russia, meanwhile, has made a historic 30-year gas deal with China. How painful do you think the consequences could be for Europe and the United States? Well, I will have to say, it, Washington seems to be making one mistake after another, and I don't like saying it since I'm an American citizen, but, you know, America is driving Russia and China together. America is driving Russia more and more to Asia. That cannot be good for America, but they see, keep making mistakes in Washington. So you're saying U.S. and Europe unwillingly pushed Russia and China together? Well, unfortunately, America seems to really bungle this whole thing very badly, as you know. They tried to do their best to instigate a coup in, in Ukraine against an elected government. Uh, they did that somewhat successfully, but then they didn't think through the consequences. Mr. Putin seems to have outsmarted uh, us. Uh, you know, they, Putin now controls Crimea, which the Russians have controlled for many decades, so that's not so unusual. What's unusual is that America didn't think what, through what they were doing. They seem to just react on a day-to-day -day basis. So now Crimea is part of Russia. The, the Russians have more and more allies in, in uh, Asia. I, I'm afraid America just didn't think it through. They bungled. They acted on a day-to-day -day basis. They reacted to events instead of looking to the future and controlling events. Oh, Mr. You... Putin seems to have outsmarted uh, Mr. Obama. Now you have called U.S. actions in regards to Ukraine another embarrassment for the U.S. foreign policy. So why? And why do you think U.S. got involved in the first place? <laughs> That's an extremely good question. Uh, why did they get involved in the first place? Uh, because we have incompetence in the State Department in Washington. I guess they thought that they could control Ukraine, which would give America more influence in Central, Central Europe and would certainly damage Russia. But in the end, it seems to have strengthened Russia and has damaged America. Uh, they, you know, politicians make mistakes. Bureaucrats make mistakes all the time. Looks like this time it was America that made the mistakes and not Russia. But if you're saying that the whole Ukrainian affair is a geopolitical failure for America, why do you think it will also hurt the U.S. economy? Where does the economy come in? Well, I didn't say it was going to hurt the U.S. economy, not anytime soon. But if, if Russia now does more and more trade with Asia instead of with Europe and instead of with the West, then obviously that's not, that's good for Russia, it's good for Asia, but America gets cut out and Europe gets cut out. You know, Russia used to sell a lot of gas to Europe, it still does. But if they stop selling gas to Europe, natural gas to Europe, and sell it to Asia, that is not good for Europe and ultimately not good for the U.S. either because the U.S. and Europe are huge trading partners. George Soros proposed opening up U.S. strategic oil reserves to drive the prices down in an effort to hurt Russian economy. Now, is that feasible? Is punishing Russia worth tapping into those reserves? Well, America does have oil reserves, but they're not enough to... I mean, if we sold all of our oil reserves... It's not enough to have any kind of significant effect on the world oil market. It might make the market go down for a day or a week or two weeks even, but then the market's going to go back before, and the market would even go back more because then America would have sold its oil reserves, and we wouldn't have anything in reserve. 
So, I, again, you'll have to ask him. I don't know, but that doesn't seem like a very viable uh, solution to me. But once again, in your opinion, if Russia gas is sent flowing eastward to China and there's trade trouble with Russian gas in Europe, will the United States be able to fill the gap? No, I mean, America says it could, but it, it would take a long time for America, you know, to get gas, natural gas from America to Europe. You don't just sort of snap your fingers and do that. You don't just put it on a boat or a plane. You've got to have special ports on both sides. You've got to have special ships. You've got to have the natural gas in the right place. No, I, yeah, it could happen someday, but someday is a long time away. And, and if Russia stops selling natural gas to Europe, that's going to hurt Europe for several years until American gas can come. And that uh, presumes and supposes that there is enough American gas, natural gas, to ship to Europe. Europe uses a lot of natural gas. And America at the moment has some, seems to have a surplus of natural gas. Will they have a surplus in five years? I don't know. Will they have enough to supply Europe with gas for many years? I doubt it. Now, um, I don't know if you know that the uh, European Union has begun sending financial aid to Ukraine. Do you think Ukraine will ever be able to pay that money back? Pay it back to the European Union? No, yep. I doubt it very seriously. They're going to have to take that money to pay Russia, pay Russia for the natural gas. No, I, I think this will be just a form of foreign aid to, from Europe to Ukraine if they do it. I don't see how Ukraine can ever pay the money back. Now, as an investor, what economic benefits are there for EU and United States? What are they expecting out of this whole affair? I mean, how do you attract investors to the country when there is civil war raging between East and the West? Sophie, you're asking an extremely good question. I don't see. I don't see what was in it for Europe and the U.S. other than some kind of geopolitical game that bureaucrats and politicians like to play. I, I don't see what the purpose of this was other than tr some kind of supposed chess game. I don't see what America expected to get out of it. Ukraine has a lot of agriculture, but other than that, I mean, those agriculture products get sold onto the world market. So I, I don't see what, why America tried to get so involved with Ukraine. It just does not make any sense to me. And as I said earlier, it seems to be hurting America now rather than helping America since the consequences have not gone the way they thought they would. But do you think the West has failed to isolate Russia politically and economically? Or is the West going to end up isolating Russia at the end? I, I don't see that it's hurt Russia. Uh, maybe there's something I don't know. But I don't see that this has hurt Russia in any way uh, at this point. What does all of this mean for the dollar? I mean, last week, Russia's economy minister told me that rubble and other national currencies will be used for trade to diversify risk. So where does that leave dollar? Well, again, I don't particularly like saying any of this because I'm an American citizen and an American taxpayer and an American voter. But if you drive people away from the dollar, many people now must be sitting there saying, gosh, if we have U.S. dollars and the U.S. decides they don't like us, they're going to put sanctions on us. So people, more and more people will say, maybe I shouldn't use the U.S. dollar. Maybe I shouldn't have my, my money in, in U.S. dollars. At the same time, as you know, Russia and China are now going to trade with each other in their own currencies instead of the U.S. dollar. More and more people are doing the same thing. They're starting to trade in other currencies besides the U.S. dollar. This is just a continuing long-term move away from the U.S. dollar. And I'm afraid that the U.S. is pushing people away from the U.S. dollar with our actions. So if you're saying that other players will move away from the dollar eventually, where, where, does, the leave, where does that leave the American economy? Well, the U.S. has been the world's reserve currency, has had the world's medium of exchange, and so far we've been able to do a lot of things because we can just print more U.S. dollars. You know, we have a, a huge balance of trade deficit. We have huge government deficits because we can print more money. If there comes a time when we cannot print money, when the world will not just take U.S. dollars because we say here they are, 
then that cripples America in many, many ways. It, the Pentagon, the, the Defense Department in the U.S., has already said that the deficit in the U.S. is a major potential weakness from the military point of view. Just recently, the, the space uh, people said, you know, every country in the world has eventually collapsed, and the, the way America's going, we might collapse too. Now, this is not me. This is the Defense Department in America, and this is the space agency in America saying these things. But if you read history, Sophie, it's true. It's correct. And when people do not have the money that they used to have, they can't, they're limited in many ways. You cannot have as many soldiers. You cannot have as many airplanes. You cannot send ships all over the world because somebody has to pay for it. And if you don't have the money to pay for it anymore, you're in trouble. All right, Jim, we're going to take a short break right now, folks. We will be back with financial guru Jim Rogers to talk pros and cons of investing in Russia right now. So stay with us. with Jim Rogers, famous investor and businessman. So Jim, you are known to invest in places where others will not dare to. And right now you seem to be putting your trust in Russia. Well, why now when all the instability in Ukraine is causing the rubble to fall and investors are extremely scared and cautious? Well, there's been a long-term uh, adage uh, in the investment world that you buy when, there, when there's disaster because if you buy when, when everybody else is panicking and dumping, you're probably going to make a lot of money in the end, unless the world comes to an end. I don't suspect that Russia is going to come to an end. Russia has huge assets. Russia has lots of foreign currency uh, in reserves as well. So when I saw Russia collapsing, uh, I thought I should buy, and I did buy. Um, I have been becoming more optimistic about Russia over the past year or two anyway, because you do have big reserves. And there are positive changes taking place in Russia, as far as I'm concerned. So I hope, Sophie, that your parents taught you to buy low and sell high. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, well listen, why not invest in Ukraine in that case? I mean, obviously, that's where the real turmoil is going on. You can buy really low right now. <laughs> I, I certainly could, but I have, I've only been to the Ukraine twice in my life, but I will tell you, I have never been impressed with the, the government or the management of the Ukraine. You don't buy something just because it's low, because it can get lower and lower and lower. Uh, I'd rather buy a sound situation uh, rather than one that's in, in turmoil and it's going to continue to be in turmoil. If you've looked at the Ukrainian government over the past 10 or 15 years, you know what I'm talking about. Someday, of course, I might invest in the Ukraine, but not, not now. So what are you thinking? How soon will all this political turmoil blow over for the Russian market? So a month, a year? Well, no, I would suspect that it's going to... Uh, America may, may put on some more sanctions of some sort, but even that is not working terribly well. As you probably know, the Canadians, who are fast allies of America, recently said, no, we're not going to do this anymore. We don't want to play this game of sanctions against Russia. Europeans don't seem to be too keen on sanctions. So I suspect that the sanctions after another round or two will probably sort of dry up and go away because, again, it's doing nothing. It doesn't hurt the Russians, doesn't seem to, and it's driving the Russians. There are plenty of people who will do business with the Russians. Look at a map. Russia's a gigantic country. There are lots of countries that will do business with Russia. So I don't suspect this is going to last too much longer. Now, you personally, in terms of investing in Russia, you're, not look, you're looking at non-energy companies. Is it right? Well, I, I, I have plenty of energy investments, so I'm not investing in energy companies in Russia. I'm trying to find other parts of the Russian economy. Well, that's Russia's what I was going to ask you. What do you invest in in economy, Russia? But I'm looking, well, I buy the Russian index, which is a basket of Russian shares. Uh, I, I own shares of the Moscow Stock Exchange. I, owe Aerofl I own Aeroflot. I'm looking for other areas to invest. I don't have many, any others yet, but I'm looking. Um, 
Look, I get a sense that from what you're saying that more sanctions are imposed, the more buying opportunities there are in Russia. Is this how it works exactly? Well, I said if there are more sanctions. Washington keeps saying they're going to put on more sanctions, so I presume they will. I mean, if that's what they say they're going to do, they probably will do it. Uh, and usually, when something like that happens, stocks get weak, at least for a while. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen, whether they'll do it or whether it's going to make stocks weak, but it often does. Well, okay, but buying law, like you see, like you say, seems like a well-known basic strategy. But you're not afraid for the long-term state of the Russian economy, even with a possible third wave of sanctions? No, of course I am. I, my point about sanctions is they don't seem to be hurting Russia. I don't see that there are any major sanctions that can hurt Russia over any extended period of time. So, no, I, I, I am, for one, do not see how sanctions from America, especially if their allies don't go along with them or don't go along with them in a big way, I don't see how that can hurt Russia other than maybe in the short term. It, it just, I don't see it. Now, with all these numerous trade deals signed in Shanghai, do you think it will lure investors back to Russia and reassure them? Yes, I mean, the Russian market is already up over the last couple of months, as you probably know. Uh, yes, more and more people see that the sanctions aren't very viable, that it hasn't hurt Russia. In fact, in some ways, it's strengthening Russia because now they're doing more business with China. China's a pretty successful economy, so it's not hurting. And in some ways, it's actually helping Russia because it's driving Russia to other parts of the world. Russia doesn't have to use the U.S. dollar to trade with China now because the Chinese and the Russians have made currency deals. It's just driving people away from the U.S. dollar, not towards the U.S. dollar. Now, do you expect to see gains from your investments in Russia, let's say, during your lifetime? During my lifetime? Yep. Well, I, I hope I live a long time, Sophie, so yes. <laughs> I hope I live a long, long time. Well, we hope to. But tell me one more thing. Do you feel like there's a shift in a global economic balance? Are we going to see more Asian giants sign economic deals with Russia, you think? Oh, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will, if for, if for no other reason than the fact that the Russians are now pushing more towards uh, Asia, partly out of necessity. And so you will certainly see, and, and I know that R Moscow is putting huge amounts of money into the, to the Far East. I know that you've built a railroad all the way into North Korea. No, no, I know Russia is putting a push towards Asia. And obviously, if there are opportunities for Asians, they're going to take advantage of it. So, no, it's, it's happening. Now, you have said that you're astonished that Moscow is on its way to becoming an international financial center. You really think it has what it takes? No, what I said was I'm astonished that, that, that they think that, that they're going to try. Uh, I don't know if they can make my... Mr. Putin says he wants to make Moscow a major financial s center. I'm astonished. I never thought of Moscow as a potential uh, financial center. But I do know Moscow is going to spend a lot of money and time and energy trying to develop itself as a major uh, financial center. And if they, just by trying, they're going to make Moscow more attractive, whether it works or not in 10 or 15 years, I don't know. But in the meantime, a lot of money and effort is going into trying to make it a financial center. And talking about 10, 15 years, I know your children have been learning Chinese from very young age. Is that where the future is in China? Well, in my future, uh, in my view, uh, China is going to be the most important country in the 21st century, wh whether we like it or not. And uh, again, this move of Russia more towards Asia just reinforces that whole trend of China becoming more and more important in the world. Why are you investing in Russia then? Or are you investing in Russia and China as well? Well, Russia is, a, is, you know, Russia is one of the most hated stock markets in the world, perhaps second only to Argentina, which is hated more. Uh, I have learned that when things like that happen, they're usually pretty cheap. Russia has a convertible currency, has very low debt, has lots of resources, and when the stocks get knocked down, 
I started to invest. Listen, I was very bearish on Russia for 46 years of my life. Uh, I've only started becoming positive on Russia in the last couple of years. So I do think I see opportunities, and therefore I'm investing. So when did you first come to Russia? I first went to Russia in 1966 and came away pessimistic and was pessimistic for the next 46 years. I knew it wouldn't work. Uh, but now I see positive changes taking place, and so I started investing in Russia. But what, what was that moment that actually changed your mind? Do you remember? No, no, it was not anything specific. It was a series of events. I happened, I went to Vladivostok. I saw what was happening in Vladivostok. I saw changes. I went to Moscow a couple of times. I saw changes taking place. I, I heard some of the government officials and what they were doing, how they were setting up investment funds to invest with foreigners so that everybody would either make money or lose money together. I, I saw a variety of things happening over a period of time, and the net result was I decided that Russia wasn't as bad as it had been for 46 years. Um, I want to ask one more question about China. See, I'm thinking that um, China is still an emerging market, even though it's huge and it's strong, and it hasn't suffered any crisis yet. But it might at some point, like all the markets do. So when that happens, how do other world markets protect themselves? Is it even possible? Well, China is the second largest economy in the world, and if the second largest economy in the world has problems, it's going to affect some people, if nothing else, the people who do business with China will be suffering. And when that's a lot of people, because it is such a huge economy now. It's just like if, if, um, if America has problems, it affects a lot of people. Or if Japan has problems, it affects some people. So there's no question that China will have problems. I don't know what or when or why, but every country has problems somewhere along the line. What is a little bit unusual is it's been a long time since China has had major problems. That is extremely unusual. That's one reason I'm not buying many shares in China right now. They have big debts, internal debts. So I'm waiting in case there's another problem come, or a problem coming out of China. And if there is a problem or some problems, I hope I'm smart enough to buy more China. All right, Jim, thank you so much for this interesting insight, for your advice. We're talking, about, we're talking to Jim Rogers, renowned investor and businessman, author. We're talking about who the sanctions can benefit and also why should people invest in Russia and not China. That's it for this edition of Sophie and Cohen, and we'll see you next time. opportunities for Asians, they're going to take advantage of it. So no, it's, it's happening. Now you have said that you're astonished that Moscow is on its way to becoming an international financial center. You really think it has what it takes? No, what I said was I'm astonished that, that, that they think that, that they're going to try. Uh, I don't know if they can make my, Mr. Putin says he wants to make Moscow a major financial s center. I'm astonished. I never thought of Moscow as a potential financial center. But I do know Moscow is going to spend a lot of money and time and energy trying to develop itself as a major financial center. And if they, just by trying, they're going to make Moscow more attractive. Whether it works or not in 10 or 15 years, I don't know. But in the meantime, a lot of money and effort is going into trying to make it a financial center. And talking about 10, 15 years, I know your children have been learning Chinese from a very young age. Is that where the future is in China? Well, in my future, uh, in my view, uh, China is going to be the most important country in the 21st century, wh whether we like it or not. And uh, again, this move of Russia more towards Asia just reinforces that whole trend of China becoming more and more important in the world. Why are you investing in Russia then? Or are you investing in Russia? I'm away. And if Russia stops selling natural gas to Europe, that's going to hurt Europe for several years until 
American gas can come. And that uh, presumes and supposes that there is enough American gas, natural gas, to ship to Europe. Europe uses a lot of natural gas, and America at the moment has some, seems to have a surplus of natural gas. Will they have a surplus in five years? I don't know. Will they have enough to supply Europe with gas for many years? I doubt it. Now, um, I don't know if you know that the uh, European Union has begun sending financial aid to Ukraine. Do you think Ukraine will ever be able to pay that money back? Pay it back to the European Union? No, yep. I doubt it very seriously. They're going to have to take that money to pay Russia, pay Russia for the natural gas. No, I, I think this will be just a form of foreign aid to, from Europe to Ukraine if they do it. I don't see how Ukraine can ever pay the money back. Now, as an investor, what economic benefits are there for EU and United States? What are they expecting out of this whole affair? I mean, how do you attract investors to the country when there is civil war raging between East and the West? Sophie, you're asking an extremely good question. I don't see. I don't see what was in it for Europe and the U.S. other than some kind of geopolitical is going to last too much longer. Now, you personally, in terms of investing in Russia, you're not look. You're looking at non-energy companies. Is it right? Well, I, I, I have plenty of energy investments, so I'm not investing in energy companies in Russia. I'm trying to find other parts of the Russian economy. Well, that's Russia's what I was going to ask you. What do you invest in in economy, Russia? But I'm looking. Well, I buy the Russian index, which is a basket of Russian shares. Uh, I, I own shares of the Moscow Stock Exchange. I, owe Aerofl I own Aeroflot. I'm looking for other areas to invest. I don't have many, any others yet, but I'm looking. Um, look, I get a sense that from what you're saying that more sanctions are imposed, the more buying opportunities there are in Russia. Is this how it works exactly? Well, I said if there are more sanctions. Washington keeps saying they're going to put on more sanctions, so I presume they will. I mean, if that's what they say they're going to do, they probably will do it. Uh, and usually, when something like that happens, stocks get weak, at least for a while. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen, whether they'll do it or whether it's going to make stocks weak, but it often does. Well, okay, but buying law, like you see, like you say, seems like a well-known basic strategy. But you're not afraid for the long-term state of the Russian economy, even with a possible third. Go a major financial center. I'm astonished. I never thought of Moscow as a potential financial center, but I do know Moscow is going to spend a lot of money and time and energy trying to develop itself as a major financial center. And if they, just by trying, they're going to make Moscow more attractive. Whether it works or not in 10 or 15 years, I don't know. But in the meantime, a lot of money and effort is going into trying to make it a financial center. And talking about 10, 15 years, I know your children have been learning Chinese from very young age. Is that where the future is in China? Well, in my future, uh, in my view, uh, China is going to be the most important country in the 21st century, wh whether we like it or not. And uh, again, this move of Russia more towards Asia just reinforces that whole trend of China becoming more and more important in the world. Why are you investing in Russia then? Or are you investing in Russia and China as well? Well, Russia is, a, is, you know, Russia is one of the most hated stock markets in the world perhaps second only to Argentina, which is hated more, uh, I have learned that when things like that happen, they're usually pretty cheap. Russia has a convertible currency, has very low debt, has lots of resources. And when the stocks get knocked down, I started investing. And this is the space agency in America saying these things. But if you read history, Sophie, it's true. It's correct. that when people do not have the money that they used to have, they can't, they're limited in many ways. You cannot have as many soldiers. You cannot have as many airplanes. You cannot send ships all over the world because somebody has to pay for it. And if you don't have the money to pay for it anymore, you're in trouble. All right, Jim, we're going to take a short break right now, folks. We will be back with financial guru Jim Rogers to talk pros and cons of investing in Russia right now. So stay with us. back 
with Jim Rogers, famous investor and businessman. So Jim, you are known to invest in places where others will not dare to. And right now you seem to be putting your trust in Russia. Well, why now when all the instability in Ukraine is causing the rubble to fall and investors are extremely scared and cautious? Well, there's been a long-term uh, adage uh, in the investment world that you buy when, there, when there's disaster, because if you buy when, when everybody else is panicking and dumping, you're probably going to make a lot of money in the end, unless the world comes to an end. I don't suspect that that's good for Russia, it's good for Asia, but America gets cut out and Europe gets cut out. You know, Russia used to sell a lot of gas to Europe, it still does. But if they stop selling gas to Europe, natural gas to Europe, and sell it to Asia, that is not good for Europe and ultimately not good for the U.S. either because the U.S. and Europe are huge trading partners. George Soros proposed opening up U.S. strategic oil reserves to drive the prices down in an effort to hurt Russian economy. Now, is that feasible? Is punishing Russia worth tapping into those reserves? Well, America's does have oil reserves, but they're not enough to, I mean, if we sold all of our oil reserves, it's not enough to have any kind of significant effect on the world oil market. It might make the market go down for a day or a week or two weeks even, but then the market's going to go back before and the market would even go back more because then America would have sold its oil reserves and we wouldn't have anything in reserve. So I, again, you'll have to ask him. I don't know, but that doesn't seem like a very viable uh, solution to me. But once again, in your opinion, if Russia gas is sent flowing eastward to China and there's trade trouble with Russian gas in Europe, will the United States be able to fill the gap? No, I mean, America says it could, but it, it would take a long time for America, you know, to get gas, natural gas from America to Europe. Numerous trade deals signed in Shanghai. Do you think it will lure investors back to Russia and reassure them? Yes, I mean, the Russian market is already up over the last couple of months, as you probably know. Uh, yes, more and more people see that the sanctions aren't very viable, that it hasn't hurt Russia. In fact, in some ways, it's strengthening Russia because now they're doing more business with China. China's a pretty successful economy, so it's not hurting. And in some ways, it's actually helping Russia because it's driving Russia to other parts of the world. Russia doesn't have to use the U.S. dollar to trade with China now because the Chinese and the Russians have made currency deals. It's just driving people away from the U.S. dollar, not towards the U.S. dollar. Now, do you expect to see gains from your investments in Russia, let's say, during your lifetime? During my lifetime? Yep. Well, I, I hope I live a long time, Sophie, so yes. <laughs> I hope I live a long, long time. Well, we hope to. But tell me one more thing. Do you feel like there's a shift in a global economic balance? Are we going to see more Asian giants sign economic deals with Russia, you think? Oh, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will, if for, if for no other reason than the fact that the Russians are now pushing more towards uh, Asia, partly out of necessity. And so you will certainly see, and, and I know that Moscow...